I ain't gonna lie to you guys. A couple of days when no news was happening, I was this close to considering an OnlyFans account. Would you simp for me? Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. Finally got us some movie news to talk about today. We are going to be discussing this new reboot for Pirates of the Caribbean. A couple of big Netflix movies, including Bright getting a sequel. Tom Hardy, the lead in Venom, continuing to tease us fans with Spider-Man. That is so much more, guys. So I need you to leave your opinions down below on what you think of all the news we discussed today. I can guarantee whenever I make a video entitled Female Reboot, them comments ain't pretty. Let's keep it friendly, okay? And leave a like down below, or else I'm dunking Splinter further down that sewer. All right, so starting off with the news that literally just broke last night, considering the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise that, yes, is getting a full reboot. The story comes to us from Disney Insider, who has the scoop. They have been on a roll of getting anything Disney-related correct. And with Pirates of the Caribbean being a Disney franchise, I'm willing to bet they're right on this one as well. They have it here in their article. The studio is, in fact, going the reboot route and are currently looking for a female lead. And one of the names on top of Disney's list to lead the reboot is a Avengers Endgame and Jumanji Next Level star Karen Gillian. Now that name might not be all that familiar to you, but she is the actress who plays Nebula in the Guardian movies and all the Marvel movies, as well as the redhead in the Jumanji movies. Very gifted actress, does an extraordinary job whenever she is on screen, and looks like Disney is wanting to tap her as their new lead for Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, we gotta get a couple of things out of the way. One thing probably ain't gonna make you guys too happy. I've never even actually seen any of the Pirates movies. I know, I know, I know. It was just something I never got around to. Pirates never interested me that wasn't my thing but boy with them being five six movies I, i've got to jump on that boat eventually but putting that to the side the thing that made this franchise what it is has to be credited to Johnny Depp and his performance as Jack Sparrow. Now, if you haven't been following the celebrity gossip, well, good for you, you mind your own business. But if you have, you know, Johnny Depp has gotten into a bit of trouble lately, stuff that we can't really confirm or deny, all dealing with domestic abuse and his marriage, real sticky stuff I don't wanna get into because even myself, I don't know the facts. It's just a lot of drama that Disney does not want attached to their family-friendly brand. And being that the last couple of Pirates movies also dipped in quality and weren't making that much money that's when Disney decides to hit that reboot button. The article also makes it clear whoever this new female is that is going to be leading the Pirates of the Caribbean reboot, they are not going to be a carbon copy clone of Jack Sparrow. This isn't going to be Jacqueline Sparrow. No, she's going to be a brand new character, most likely named Red, as that is one of the female characters that is associated with the Pirates of the Caribbean ride over in Disney World. And this specific ride is what the movies are based on. So she'd be a character in her own right with her own traits, her own character to make her stand out. I don't doubt she's going to be a bumbling drunk like Jack Sparrow was. So me and myself, I have no problem at all. The only thing I wonder is, are people still interested in these Pirates of the Caribbean movies? Especially if Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow is not involved at all. I mean, they've already proven that these movies have a following, that they have a success by all the sequels they've made. But how much of that can be credited to Johnny Depp, I guess we're about to find out. The thing that's really going to suck about this are just the dumb reactions people are going to have to the words female led reboot also when reading the article they have a line in there where disney is also wanting possibly a woman of color to be the lead now that makes no difference to me at all in a good or bad way i'm really just focused on you giving me a movie i'm interested in with a good story but there's gonna be people out there who just spin this the wrong way all because disney is wanting to do something different with the franchise when you reboot a movie this is exactly what you do you do something new you give a fresh idea sometimes it works other times it doesn't but you fans of pirates of the caribbean knowing that this reboot is in the works with a female lead are you interested or are you just gonna do without it in some netflix update news we finally have an idea of what's going on with the sequel to bright now if you haven't heard of bright it's essentially onward meets bad boys it's a movie that takes place in a world where fairy creatures exist like orcs elves magic but also resembles our modern life and follows these two cops who come upon a magical item that leads them into a crazy night but most of you with netflix have probably heard of this movie because it was one of netflix's first big hit films that they put out there with a big budget and even though there is a lot of hate out there for bright having a 28 percent on rotten tomatoes 
I actually completely dig this movie. I thought it was a fun, simple ride. Of course, it has its little bit of mess up, and it's a little too preachy with the orc and racism metaphor, but I thought what David Ayer was doing with that movie was cool enough that I want to see more of this world, and the fact that we finally got the news that we're getting this sequel from Netflix is cool news to me. The only catch is the same director is not coming back. Instead, they've decided to hire a new director named Lois Lachiri, who's behind The Incredible Hulk, and Now You See Me, two movies that I enjoy. I do feel a little bit bummed because I think David Ayer, who's done a lot of cool, interesting movies like End of Watch, Suicide Squad, he has a very specific, unique take on these action movies that, albeit not perfect, is very entertaining to watch. This is also being announced after Extraction, the Chris Hemsworth movie that recently came out, is also getting a sequel. And I think just really points to the direction that Netflix is heading with their entertainment, that these action films are really doing it for them. And I'm really all up for it because in times of quarantine, Netflix and all these other streaming services are proving that they are the future just because it shows movie theaters have a weak point where people aren't there and that these movies are kind of the way to go. Are you guys excited for a bright sequel or even the Extraction sequel? Let me know down below. Moving over to some Spider-Man talk, specifically Venom 2. We are all saddened to hear that the Venom sequel entitled Venom Let There Be Carnage still getting used to that name, was moved all the way to summer of 2021, even more so when the lead star Tom Hardy, who plays Eddie Brock, continues to tease fans about a possible Spider-Man Tom Holland cameo showing up in their movies. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Tom Hardy is just trolling the fans or is really trying to give us a sneak peek of what's coming without getting in trouble with the studio. Because the man has done it twice now, where he posts a picture of Venom biting Spider-Man and then deleting it after just being up for a couple of seconds. Luckily, after the first time it happened, fans decided to start putting their alerts on for whenever Tom Hardy posts something. So the second time when it happened, fans were ready with their screenshots to take these pictures. And at this point to me, it's basically a confirmation that Tom Hardy's letting us know Spider-Man is gonna show up in this movie and I's gonna have a little one-on-one -on -one with it. I really wouldn't have thought that if it wasn't also for Sony coming out and giving us their name for their Spider-Man movie universe. Just like you know, Marvel has a name for their cinematic universe entitled the MCU or Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sony decided to come out with their name and it's not as catchy. Titling it Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel Characters. Yeah, I wanna put that on a t-shirt. This also makes it even more confusing with the tie-ins that Sony and Marvel have are they really a connected universe or is it a situation where Marvel's here and Sony's just trying to climb onto that fence? I think it still means the universes are connected, but it's more in the way where Sony's gonna talk about the MCU while the MCU's gonna pretend Sony universe don't exist. It just really sucks that we were months away to finding out how Tom Holland fits into this Venom universe and what that could have meant for Marvel, and now we literally have to wait a whole year to find that out. With Tom Hardy teasing all these pictures of Spider-Man and Venom, do you think he'll actually show up in the movie? Or he's just being a troll? In some out of this world news, quite literally, we have the weirdest announcement for a movie coming up. Some of you might have already heard of this, but Elon Musk, congratulations to your new baby whose name I can't pronounce, and Tom Cruise are teaming up to bring us the first feature length movie to actually be shot in space. Yeah, I'm not making this up. Elon Musk and Tom Cruise, two people extremely rich with very unique minds are going to be shooting above our atmosphere and just making a movie. Now, there are no current details on exactly what this movie will be about. Obviously, it'll be about something to do with space. I can't imagine we're going to have a Tom Cruise rom-com set in the upper atmosphere, but you never know. The only description that we have as of right now is the project will be a feature-length action-adventure film, but will not be connected to any previous Tom Cruise movies, meaning this isn't connected to Mission Impossible or a sequel to a Jack Ryan movie. This is an all new, complete original idea. Even NASA is on board to help them out with someone connected to NASA tweeting out, NASA is excited to work with Tom Cruise on a film aboard the space station. We need popular media to inspire a new generation of engineers, scientists, to make NASA ambitious plans a reality. So probably in a weird way, this movie will turn out to be a giant commercial 
to make you a future astronaut. Look, I am all up for this. Tom Cruise has been pushing the boundaries of what he's able to do. And this is the kind of stuff that we need in Hollywood every now and then. Just these innovations that really level up the game that make other people go, I can't just be making movies in my basement. I gotta be like Tom Cruise and Elon Musk. But I wanna hear from you guys. Does this even excite you at all? And that is just some of the movie news that we've had in the past couple of days. Stuff has been really dry. I appreciate everybody who's been giving a look at some of the new content I've made, like the video game stuff or talking about some of these canceled movies that never happen. I'm working on something new for the channel that hopefully you guys will enjoy. And hell, I'm just gonna tell it to you. So you can tell me if you're gonna watch it or not. I'm thinking of sitting down with my girlfriend as we watch the entire new Sonic the Hedgehog movie and then I'll shorten down the commentary to the best 10-20 minutes of us reacting to the movie. I think that'll be a lot of fun and it could lead into a new series where I show my girlfriend a bunch of movies she's never seen, all mainly horror movies because she's a scaredy cat but you guys let me know if that's even something you'd be willing to watch. Be sure to like and subscribe follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review as always I'm Chris take care